do you think you're an alcoholic? No. Okay. You don't ever think you have a problem with it and you want to get sober? No. Good. God, that's the only reason I got in shape is so I could keep drinking. Yeah. It's the only reason I got in shape. Yeah, seriously? The only reason I got in shape. Was to keep drinking? So I could keep drinking. <laughs> Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew. He's like, I don't think you're an alcoholic. I just think you like to drink. Oh, is Bert an alcoholic? Well. So I don't got it. Okay. okay. I don't got diabetes or alcoholism, guys. Your boy's good. There you go. I might be a, a delusional narcissist. There you go. I could be. Is you have the craziest, most delusional perspective. I, I, For the past year, Burt Kreischer has been losing his mind, going full on delusional. It's as if he's adopted a persona that's completely consumed him. Despite drinking excessively, he vehemently denies being an alcoholic. While he touts himself as an artist, most people wouldn't consider podcasting to be an art. It's hard to even label his persona. It's like he's a wrong fighter. Even when people tell him something that's blatantly true, he will die on the hill of lies as if it's a joke. Yo, that's not my stomach. My stomach's tight. And it was a, it was complete. See, you have the, the craziest, most delusional perspective. Made a video a couple months back about the most awkward podcast in the history of Two Bears, One Cave. Steve-O couldn't believe that Bert wasn't an alcoholic. So much so that they even called Dr. Drew to get his opinion. Hey, Drew, you're, you're saving my life here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Drew. <laughs> oh, Steve-O, what's happening, buddy? Hey, like hey did we have another question for Drew? Oh, is Bert an alcoholic? Well, like, you know we have a saying in the program, right? You spot it, you got it. So I'm curious what you think. Um, uh, hold on. That's that's actually my argument. I think everyone in recovery only sees alcoholism. Bert has a binge issue for sure. Whether that's real deal stuff, I can't. it's hard to tell. He gets it under control on his own, so it's hard to, you know what I mean? He actually does get it under control, right? So when people ha can do that, it's hard to say, well, you got to you know, follow me. We've got some ideas. <laughs> but we'll see. Steve-O isn't the only comedian to call out Bert for being an alcoholic. Recently on BertCast, Bobby Lee called him out. It's good for Bert to hear it from someone like Bobby Lee. They are polar opposites, but at the same time, both seem to have struggled with substance abuse. Unlike Bert, Bobby has admitted to having a problem. Bert has always had a big ego. He's been named the number one partier at the number one party school in the nation. It would be hard not to have an ego, especially after turning that persona into an entire career. Why stop doing what's made you rich? But his delusion has gotten even worse over the past year. Recently on the Sober October podcast, he seems to credit himself with bringing Joe's attention to Shane Gillis. We recommended Shane Gillis for a year. How and a half. long did we text back and forth? Are you one time? I just got not taking this guy. And we're like, and we're like, yo, we gotta send him, send him the Toyota ISIS. And then and then Ari's like, I'll send it, you reply, and be like, how funny <laughs> is yep. this, Ari? Yeah. Listen, I get to things. <laughs> oh my God, you're right. I yeah. get, I get uh, to things call, in the perfect Ari. amount of time. But luckily, there are comedians out there like Bobby Lee who are willing to call out Bert on his bull. Like when Bert claimed to be an artist, I would like to note that I do believe comedians are artists. It just comes off as cringy when you listen to a comedian like Bert call himself an artist. She understands what makes us tick. She understands that we're artists and that we're a little complicated. Is it art? You, what you do? Yes. Okay, so what I'm saying is, is podcasting an art? I don't think it is. Oh, I think it is. Whether I... or not you think Burt Kreischer is an artist, it comes off as cringy when he gives himself a label. I'm glad Bobby Lee called him out on it because Burt really needs a reality check and Bobby Lee, when being serious, is someone that I think comedians look up to and respect his opinion. It's gotta be hard for Burt not to have a big ego. He sells out arenas and hangs out with Segura and Joe Rogan. Who wouldn't get a big head? It's refreshing to hear Bobby Lee say that they don't think podcasting is an art, because really, it's two people having a conversation. The podcast with Bobby is interesting because Bert and him are completely different persons. Bobby doesn't want to do a special or sell out arenas, and Bert is completely baffled at the idea of having a career like Bobby. Uh, you're everyone's favorite comic, and you've never done a special. So Number one, I don't want to do stadiums. You, know, you don't I think enjoy I it? No. Guess if any kind of podcasting is an art, this is it. Watching two comedians with totally different views sit down and try to rationalize why they do what they do. Both of them are successful in their own ways, but Bobby is more genuine. While Bert has a team of people constantly working behind the scenes and a fleet of tractor trailer trucks for his arena shows, Bobby just does his podcast, which he's not always on time for, and he doesn't want to do a special, even though he may be one of the funniest comedians alive right now. I want to admit just something to you right now, if, if, <laughs> if I may. <laughs> The reason why I haven't done a special is because of the fear of doing new shit. It's shameful. If Bobby did things the way Bert does, he may not be as successful. Bobby is the kind of guy who is successful through longevity. Um, I think the reason why I've had such a longevity, I think, is because 
I've just sort of like stayed at, a, at one level. It's an interesting way to think about success, and it shows how smart Bobby actually is despite playing dumb. There was this doctor named Carl Menninger. He was a famous psychiatrist. He said success is not defined by how good you are at something, but by how long you can sustain it. If you zoom out and look at Bert and Bobby's situation, Bobby is setting himself up to be more successful. It appears like he doesn't care or is lazy, but in reality, that's who he's always been, and it's always seemed to work out for him. While Bert does everything he can, it feels like he's the kind of guy who would never turn down an offer, which will probably lead to him getting burnt out. He said before that his family's biggest worry is that he's going to get burnt out, which is surprising because you would think they would be more concerned about his drinking. Working 24-7 is not good for anyone, even if he is bringing in the kind of money that shocks the most successful people in the business. There was a list of what comics made last year. Want to guess what he made on the road? Well, I, I have no idea. $25 uh, so, million. Dollars. I'm sorry, how many? $25 million. Dollars. Bert did? Yes. Oh my God, good for him. Yeah. While he is cashing in now, there is no way he will have the longevity of Bobby Lee. He does entire arenas, has multiple podcasts, including Two Bears, where he has to travel to Austin, not to mention the cruise. Burt probably accepts every offer he receives, regardless of its quality. You have to slow down to maintain a high quality product. The most successful comedy podcasts have a minimalist approach, like Matt and Shane, Joe Rogan, Bad Friends. They don't have massive studios or a large staff. You been to Tom's? Tom. Tom's? Oh, yeah. It's like they have a real production staff. Yeah. There's all these people running around with clipboards, and it's like... I went to Bert's house the other day. He had eight people behind computers yeah. just typing a lot of what the f they're doing, emailing oh, what? Social media yeah. going crazy, promoting arena shows. Everyone's going nuts. Me, no. I don't want that in my life. Why would you don't need it? I don't want it. You have a white guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another interesting thing to note from Bobby Lee's appearance on Burtcast was that he, like numerous other comedians, called Bert out for his excessive alcohol consumption. Steve O asked him the same question when he was on Two Bears One Cave a while back, but again, Bert says no, he is not an alcoholic. Do you think you're an alcoholic? No. Okay. But do you drink a lot? No, uh, I ha yeah, I do. You have. Yeah, I have an idea. And I when do. I look at you sometimes I go, he is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, so you think that um, you don't ever, ever want, you don't ever think you have a problem with it and you want to get sober. No. Good. I'm sure the last thing Bert wants to hear is criticism from someone like Bobby. Bobby has openly discussed his own battles with addiction. But when Bobby called out Bert, I bet it struck a chord. When Steve-O called him out on the Two Bears episode, it didn't really seem genuine. Instead, it felt like Steve-O was accusing Bert. It wasn't out of concern. It was like... I know better than you. What's interesting about Bobby calling Burr out on this is that it coincided with the release of a new episode of Two Bears One Cave, during which Tom and Burt made what they called a big announcement. As a fan of Two Bears One Cave, I was hopeful that the big announcement would involve a return to the show's original format featuring just Tom and Burt. But as it turns out, their big announcement was that they were releasing their own vodka called Tiger Thick, I mean Por Orsos, which fans could care less about. It means nothing for the quality of the show, it actually feels like a slap in the face to their fans as they are using the platform to push a product. Just look at the like to dislike ratio. And so, Bertrand and I are launching our very own vodka. Yes. Poor Osos. Poor Osos it is. For bears. And what we have decided to do today is um, we're going to have a huge, 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 uh, uh, what is it? Revelation, uh, invitation, launch. Yeah. In Las Vegas. Wait, Las what Vegas better place? is our soft launch. We yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're not drinking the whole thing? I'm just sampling uh Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, you get, you I guess can, I'm getting drunk today. Go ahead, get drunk. Hey, that's why. That's right. I've earned it. Yeah, I've earned my Fart. day. No, oh. I've, I'm on it, Tommy. Okay, but here's the one. These guys are wild, dude. The they flooded our bathroom. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm. I haven't drank in over a week, and it just kicked in. It, I, I got a buzz. It feels so good. There's leak. It was leaking downstairs in my house. I love, I love alcohol. Two inches of water in our bathroom. I love alcohol. What's funny about this situation is twofold. First, it seems to make Tom even more unlikable. Their decision to follow in the footsteps of Brendan Schaub's Tiger Thick gives off the impression that they are simply trying to capitalize on their moment. I will say that the name of their vodka is better than Tiger Thick, but still. Concerning Bert, he's consistently denied being an alcoholic, yet he treats his drink as if it's the most precious thing in the world. I get it though, they are just selling a product like all YouTubers do. It's merch. But for fans, it's not worthy of an entire episode called Big Announcement. It seems like ever since Tom called out his fans for being poor, things have went downhill. 
Then he had the whole washcloth bit with just added fuel to the fire. Not to mention, Nadav left YMH along with Dr. Drew, and then the 69 minute special happened and in my opinion is Tom's gringo poppy. When it comes to Birch drinking habits, it appears unlikely that he'll quit anytime soon. Drinking has long been ingrained in his persona, dating back to his college days when he gained notoriety as the biggest partier in the nation. Now with his own vodka brand, it's doubtful that his drinking will slow down anytime soon. Hard to, you can't defend yourself. It's like a shark attack victim going, you know there's sharks out there and you're like, no, I know you're missing your arm. Yeah. But I've been in the ocean and I've been okay a couple times. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to keep going back in. Yeah. Like I enjoy the ocean. I'm not going to stop surfing. Yeah. Like I, that's the only reason I got in shape is so I could keep drinking. Yeah. It's the only reason I got in shape. Yeah, seriously? The only reason I got in shape. Was to keep drinking? So that I could keep drinking. <laughs> yeah. I got in shape for a lot of reasons. <laughs> Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew. He, he's like, I don't think you're an alcoholic. I just think you like to drink. And I read, you know, look, I don't know. I'm going to go off on this. But like, I do think there is a middle ground for people. Like there is yeah. a middle ground where you get to have fun and then you just get your life in order and make sure you're not f***ing things up. Yeah. Here's the other thing. It's like, try finding 10 people that are going to give me an intervention. I'm fun as party with. Yeah, that's true. No one wants to stop Like, no that. one's going to be like, uh, even when I was at my worst, everyone was still giving me beers. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I don't got it. Okay. I don't <laughs> got diabetes or alcoholism, guys. Your boy's good. There you go. I might be a, a delusional narcissist. There you go. I could be. Bert's admission of possibly being a delusional narcissist may be one of the most sincere things he's ever said. This was particularly evident during his emotional breakdown on the Ed Milet show. Rather than expressing concern about who he would miss if he passed, he found himself in tears contemplating what people would miss him. Emotional thinking about this. Maybe just a couple times if people, when I'm gone, people just go like, man, it'd be so much cooler if Bert was here. Like, God, we'd have so much fun. Like, wouldn't it be great if Bert was here and he just walked in with a bottle of champagne and and a crazy story or, like, I just, like... Comedy fans who follow Burr are well aware of the many things he says are embellished or just outright made up. However, when it comes to his drinking habits, he consistently references Dr. Drew to support his claims that he is not an alcoholic. Even after listening to the podcast with Steve-O, I too arrived at the conclusion that the issue isn't with alcohol, but rather attention. He has said multiple times that he can abstain from drinking for extended periods. What he can't seem to stop is being the center of attention. He's always in the spotlight making headlines, like that golf tournament where he managed to grab front page news for tackling a protester. Bert Kreischer is an alcoholic, but he's so highly functional. Um, he has his shit together. Um, it does, it's not destroying his life. I have to say this. If you ever think that it's out of control, you can always call me. I think something like this from Bobby has to hit close to home for Burke. It's a common occurrence for comedians to drink and party. Their shows are most always in bars. Interestingly, Shane Gillis and his drinking isn't a concern among his fans. Most people who follow Shane knew that he would someday be sponsored by Bud Light long before he secured the deal with them. I believe fans tend to turn on comedians like Burt because over time, the novelty of their shtick wears off, as comedians and people inevitably find something to criticize. And for Burt, his drinking becomes the most glaring target. He recently showed up on Pat McAfee's podcast and plugged his own vodka again making the rounds before the Super Bowl. The first time felt like the segment was for him, but then Tom and him show up and hijack CJ Stroud's segment where CJ was already plugging his own drink. Can we come on the set? Uh, yeah, we are. Bird, that's on okay. Okay. Hey, All right. Oh, wow. All right. Hey, Tommy Bones with us. All right, hey, Tom. Hey, hey, Tom. Tommy. Tommy. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Tommy. 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 Hey, CJ Stroud. Do you know these guys? No, I know a CJ. They one of those hoodies, yeah, Tommy. Man. These are two funny whites. Two funny whites, CJ. <laughs> yeah, really, two What's funny up, whites, so, Tom and... To interrupt. Hey man, thank you for stopping by. Yeah. Oh. I heard you were sleeping this morning. Yeah, I got you a recovery drink. Thanks. Oh wow. I was. They said if two brothers would have walked in, they would have called the police. No <laughs> still doing it. I'm hammered. Still doing I'm it. I'm gonna give it to Tom. Uh, I yeah, shouldn't yeah, talk. Yeah. Don't, don't Watch out, man. It's C4 time. Y'all, y'all tripping. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's this taste oh, like? Uh, it's really good, actually. This is really good. Waterfall. Yeah. For, how's this? Great mix. That's delicious. Try it. What is it? What is it's it? our recovery drink. So what's in it? There's is the, the, we take migrants' blood and bone marrow at the border. There you See, go. And, oh, See, that's, what else? What else? What else? I, I had the mind. Yeah, yeah, what I'm, I'm gonna throw Isn't it all. weird how high level athletes <laughs> don't move. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy yeah, especially right? uh, Thursday at 11 a.m. You know, Thursday 11 a.m. Hey, Bird, here's to you, bub. Brother. Brother. Y'all get a free promo. Brother. Excuse me. I'm in the way. Hold that Here. C4 up. Y'all get right. free promos. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> hey, here's to you boys. 
Cheers. Two bears. Well, so, so. How many push-ups do you think I can do right now? Uh, I got a good uh, three and a half. <laughs> three and a half? <laughs> He's doubting you. Oh, my wow. God. Boom. <laughs> All right. Okay. CJ, three. No Hold underwear. on, Bert, Bert. He lost 50 grand, he said. There you go. Hey, way to go, Bert. We're proud of you, Bert. We're proud of you, Bert. We're proud of you, Bert. I'm here. Look at the Hey, we appreciate you boys. Man. Keep going. Sorry, Bert. Good work, Bert. Oh, it's awesome. Hey, Love work. you too, Bert. Thank you. Yeah, so CJ, those are two drunk whites in a wild. <laughs> and uh, they just, we did not know that was happening on this. So. This may be the biggest fail for both of them in their entire careers. What in the actual f***?